In this presentation, we will take a look at studying the Word of God, studying the Scriptures, and taking responsibility for your own learning. First, let's take a look at some verses in Exodus 20, verses 18 through 21, where we see Israel outsource their religious education. Take a look at the experience they have. The background is they have been in the wilderness. They have just left Egypt, the bondage of Egypt. Moses has freed them, and he has now taken them to the base of Mount Sinai so that they can meet God on their own, they can meet him, not have a representative or someone else stand in for them, but they can wait upon the Lord. And when the day comes for Jehovah to come down in his majesty, power, and glory, here's what happens. Verse 18, Exodus 20, verse 18, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, and when they saw it, they removed and stood afar off. So, if you remember, during that whole time as they're coming to Mount Sinai, they have been murmuring and complaining. And maybe one of the reasons why they are not excited to meet Jehovah is maybe it finally hits them that we're not really worthy to be here. So our worthiness and whether we're keeping the commandments or not or coming unto Christ is going to determine a lot on how we respond to him and when he comes. And certainly the majesty and glory and the power that he comes with is a little overpowering to them. And it says in verse 19, And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us. And we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. They were afraid. They had fear. And I think it has a lot to do with because they knew they weren't worthy. If you're just going to murmur and complain the whole time against God's chosen, chosen anointed, you're not going to receive of the Spirit. You will not be prepared to meet God. And he said, Moses, you go do it for us. And Moses says in verse 20, and Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that you sin not. Don't fear. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. That his fear, or it may be awe or respect, this is probably some better words that come from the same Hebrew word as the word fear, may be before your faces. Respect him. Look at the awe. Reverence him. There's probably the best word, reverence. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. They wouldn't come. They would not humble their hearts, most likely because they knew they were not worthy. And so they just made a critical decision. In Exodus 20, 18 through 21, Israel made a very unwise decision to outsource their education and come in to know the Messiah to others. We will let others do for us. Others will read the scriptures. Others will explain them to us. And so from this time forth, down through the, the centuries, Israel themselves personally do not take responsibility for their own learning. They outsource it to somebody else. And let's take a look at the consequences of that action. So we know that they will outsource it to Moses. Then they outsource it to the other prophets. Later the scribes and the Pharisees come. And they rely upon them to tell them what the word is. how What it means. How they should apply it. Well, what about us today, brothers and sisters? If your only gospel study is what you're receiving in Sunday School and Gospel Doctrine, then that is not enough to make it enter rely on God. When God comes in his power and glory, you will fear him. You will run. You will hide. You have to take responsibility for your own learning. Only you can wait upon the Lord. We cannot outsource it to other people. Now, we have others to help us, to guide us, to direct us, but we are not to completely turn it over to them. 
we are responsible for our own learning. Well, consider what President Nelson said in April 2020. In the coming days, it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. Notice what he did not say. He didn't say that it will, you will not survive spiritually if you don't listen to every word I say. No, that's not the program. It's not his responsibility, Father or brothers and sisters, to guide and direct all of us in our lives personally. That is not his job. His job is to guide and direct the church as a whole and to make sure it stays clean and pure on the right direction. It is your responsibility to get the Holy Ghost and to be guided and directed by the cults. He is the one that shows us all things that we should do. That doesn't negate that we don't follow the prophet, but we're not to just follow the prophet and wait for his command and that's it and just turn over our responsibility to, well, the prophet hasn't said yet, I'm not going to do it, or what has he said? No, we're to get the Holy Ghost. And a part of that will be through feasting upon the words of Christ, as it says in 2 Nephi 32, 3. Feast upon the words of Christ, for they will show, tell you all things that ye should do. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we will be guided and directed. That's who's to guide and direct us, not the arm of flesh. Well, how about how do you hear him campaign that you've seen on social media that's been for at least the last two years, maybe the last three years, where the brethren have constantly been asking, how do you hear him? They're trying to tell us, you need to learn how to hear him. You need to learn how to come unto Christ through the scriptures. You need to learn how to hear his voice, either through direct revelation, through the Holy Ghost, or through the words of the prophets and apostles in scripture. We are to take responsibility for our own scriptural learning, not outsource it to somebody else. Well, as I said, the Israelites did not. They turned it over to Moses, the prophets, later the scribes, the Pharisees. Now let's take a look at the result. Israel, who was constantly taught about the Savior through types, symbols, and prophecy, they were constantly by others, were not prepared for his coming in the meridian of time. In fact, the majority didn't even recognize him as the Messiah. I think, now there's a lot of factors, but one of them has to be that they did not take personal responsibility for their learning of the scriptures. They outsourced their learning. And so because of that, it never got into their hearts the way it was supposed to. They never personally learned the types and symbols and how it applied to them and likening the scriptures unto themselves. And the result, when he comes, they are not prepared to receive him. The same will be true when he comes the second time. Those who are prepared to receive him will be those, among other things, those who have spent time in the scriptures coming unto Christ. Here's what some counsel President Howard W. Hunter gave us. Many find that the best time to study is in the morning after a night's rest has cleared the mind of the many cares that interrupt thought. Others prefer to study in the quiet hours after work and worries of the day are over and brushed aside, thus ending the day with the peace and tranquility that comes by communion with the scriptures. Perhaps what is more important than the hour of the day is that a regular time be set aside for study. It would be ideal if an hour could be spent each day, but if that cannot be had, a half hour on a regular basis would result in substantial accomplishment. A quarter of an hour is little time, but it is surprising how much enlightenment and knowledge can be acquired in a subject so meaningful. The important thing is to allow nothing else to ever interfere with our study. We should not be haphazard in our reading, but rather develop a systematic plan for study. There are some who read to a schedule of a number of pages or a set number of chapters each day or week. This may be perfectly justifiable and may be enjoyable if one is reading for pleasure, but it does not constitute meaningful study. 
it is better to have a set amount of time to give scriptural study each day than to have a set amount of chapters to read. Sometimes we find that the study of a single verse will occupy the whole time. I encourage us, all of us, to set aside a time that works for you. Hour, half hour, he said, even if you can just give 15 minutes where you study, not that I have to get through certain chapters, a certain amount, but that I study the scriptures. And this year is the New Testament. On another occasion, President Hunter said, those who dwell into the scriptural library, however, find that to understand requires more than casual reading or pursual. There must be concentrated study. It is certain that one who studies the scriptures every day accomplishes far more than one who devotes considerable time one day and then lets days go by before continuing. Not only should we study each day, but there should be a regular time set aside when we can concentrate without interference. So you're better off 10, 15 minutes daily than you are an hour and then a week goes by and then another hour, even two hours, and then another week or two weeks go by consistently. The scriptures constantly talk about those who are diligent. Diligent means consistent, consistently. Are we diligent? Do we do it consistently? Are we diligent in our scripture study? President Henry B. Eyring said, reading, studying, and pondering are not the same. We, we read words and we, get, we may get ideas. We study and we may discover patterns and connections in scriptures. But when we ponder, we invite revelation by the Spirit. Pondering to me is the thinking and the praying I do after reading and studying in the scriptures carefully. We need to also ponder besides just the study. Here are some helpful resources, at least resources that I have found helpful in my study of the scriptures. Notice we are not just to read them. We are to feast upon them. We are to study them. One is symbolism is one of the main teaching techniques used by the prophets and the Savior himself. So an excellent book that's on the right, you can see, that helps with all kinds of scriptural symbolism is called The Lost Language of Symbolism by Alonzo L. Gaskill. It is an excellent book. It has about practically every symbol you could think of in the scriptures and what that symbolism means and what it's trying to teach. And so I have found that very helpful in coming to understand the symbolism in the scriptures and what the prophets or the Savior is trying to teach through those symbols. The Bible dictionary is invaluable. The one in the back of the eldest edition of the Bible is good, but because of space, it's limited. It's not very large. They only had so much space or, you know, the book would be too thick in the Bible and so there are some great things in it. Utilize it, use it. But if you have the ability to purchase something else, this is the one I would. An excellent Bible dictionary is the New Unger's Bible Dictionary. Merrill F. Unger. This is an excellent Bible dictionary full of invaluable things in the scriptures and explaining words, concepts, and different things and helping you better understand and study the scriptures. Probably the least used thing and one of the most valuable is our LDS edition of the scriptures. It includes all kinds of helps in the footnotes that sometimes get ignored. They are a great resource. If ever in doubt about a verse, look in the footnotes below. There is most likely something that is going to help you either cross-reference or there's going to be, oh, here's what the Greek or Hebrew means for that word. And you're wondering, what's that word? And then here's, here's another translation of that word. Or there will tell you the idiom, or i.e., in other words, it means this. Or the Joseph Smith changed, or it gives him additions in the Joseph Smith translation. 
And so they're included in the footnotes, or for the longer ones, they're back by the Bible maps, the Joseph Smith translations, the ones that are longer. So utilize the footnotes down below. There's a wealth of information that will help you in studying the scriptures. Another great resource are other translations of the Bible. We use the King James Version of the church because that is what a majority of people use. And it's a worthy translation done by worthy scholars at the time. But sometimes the King James translation of the Bible can be confusing because of the use of the words that we no longer use or use in the way they use them. Other credible translations can help shed light on otherwise confusing verse or verses. A no-cost solution to this is the following website. If you'll go to www.blueletterbible, all one word, blueletterbible.org, you can choose from a variety of translations to gain added insight. Now, I know one of the worries that people have, well, how do I know that it's a faithful translation? Well, this will test your gospel knowledge. As long as a translation is not outside the doctrines and the knowledge of the restored gospel, see, so this, you learn the restored gospel and our doctrines, or dilutes the meaning or teaching or teaching, dilutes the meaning or teaching, then it can be used with a good level of confidence. And so if it's contrary to the restoration of the gospel, the principles, it's the, the translation, and it's diluting the meaning and teaching a doctrine contrary to the restored gospel, then don't don't rely on that translation. But there are most of them are really good. The revised uh, standard version, RSV, and other the NIV, New International Version, NIV, they, they do some good stuff. Now, when you go to that website, www.blueletterbible.org, this is what you'll see. It'll come up and it'll look like this, and it has a search. You can search for words or topics. You put them in there, and then you see down below the next box is a drop-down box. You can choose the KJV, the King James Version, or you click on that arrow, and there will be a whole bunch of other versions that you can click, and sometimes that, that you can click, and it will bring up that version, and sometimes the way they word it just is a little more helpful and a little more used to the way we use English today instead of the King James Version. And so hopefully that helps. This has been a great help. Also, you can look up the Hebrew and the Greek of the Old Testament or New Testament with this blue letter Bible and can study that way also. Well, President Spencer W. Kimball said, The years have taught me that if we will energetically pursue this worthy personal goal, to study the scriptures, in a determined and conscientious manner, we will indeed find answers to our problems and peace in our hearts. We shall experience the Holy Ghost broadening our understanding, finding new insights, witness an unfolding pattern of all scripture, and the doctrines of the Lord shall come to have more meaning to us than we ever thought possible. As a consequence, we shall have greater wisdom with which to guide ourselves and our families. I ask all to begin now to study the scriptures in earnest, if you have not already done so. I find that when I get casual in my relationships with divinity, and when it seems that no divine ear is listening, and no divine voice is speaking, that I am far, far away. If I immerse myself in the scriptures, the distant narrows, and the spirituality returns. I find myself loving more intensely those whom I must love with all my heart and mind and strength, and loving them more, I find it easier to abide their counsel. I find that all I need to do to increase my love for my Maker and the Gospel and the Church and my brethren is to read the Scriptures. I have spent many hours in the Scriptures. I cannot see how anyone can read the Scriptures and not develop a testimony of their divinity and of the divinity of the work of the Lord, who is the spokesman in the Scriptures. Brothers and sisters, one of the ways God answers our prayers and talks to us is through 
the scriptures. Read section 18 of the Doctrine and Covenants, and he says, if you want to hear my voice, then read the scriptures, for they are my voice. And so as he says, if sometimes you feel far, far away from the Spirit or from the Savior, then immerse yourself in the scriptures. Do it daily, for I don't know about you, but I need Christ and the Spirit daily with me. It is through the scriptures that the majority of the time is how he will speak to us and will be guided and directed. Start now. Start this new year and continue in a approach to studying the scriptures and coming unto Christ through the study of the scriptures. Well, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the presentation, hit the like button and please consider subscribing to my channel.